Alrighty, traders. Uh, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Daily Roundup webinar. I hope everybody's having a great um, trading session. Um, you know, it, it, there's obviously been some volatility, so I think we need to start off by talking about. Um, let's start off by talking about the the equity markets first and foremost, and see where we're at. So, uh, you know, the S and P, as we talked about earlier today, we were coming out of the descent, the ascending wedge. Excuse me. Um, what we've done since then is we've uh, come back up into the uh, into the wedge, which is irritating as all get out, believe me, um, and stalled at the 78% retracement of the last move down. Now we've come off, and the reason why we've come off is you know these, these COVID numbers are starting to weigh on the market a little bit. You know we're seeing an uh, increase in Florida, Texas, Arizona. Um, amongst other states too, and 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 it's starting to, you know, like I said, it's starting to weigh a little bit on uh, risk appetite. Now, should we write off the market? Uh, I don't know about that. And, and and frankly, I think you know, while we're above thirty one hundred, it's hard to be bearish, too bearish. All right, but there are some important rejections today that I think we in the FX market we at least need to pay pretty close attention to. All right. Um, so uh, again, I, I think while we're above 3,100, it's, uh, you know, if you're trading equities or you're, you're thinking about risk on risk off, I think it is still, you know, uh, risk on as of right now, while we're above the, uh, while we're above the 3,100 level, but let's take a look at, you know, some, some important developments as far as currencies go. So uh, let's start off with the Euro. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit about the euro dollar because this has been in focus and let me delete this, but I'll, I'll draw a little bit more on the euro dollar here in a second. So the euros come off, um, you know, trying to trying to solidify a, um, a head and shoulder pattern. Now, the thing is with this head and shoulder pattern, it's a complex head and shoulder pattern with a lower right shoulder, which means that in order for it to complete you know, to, to, to really complete here. Uh, it, it, let's just, you know, for argument's sake, let's say it did break down. Uh, it's got a long way to go, like to 110 uh, before it completes. Could that happen? Sure it could. Um, am I expecting it? No, I'm not. I'm at, I, you know, if you, if you remember the week ahead video, I'm actually looking for a move to 111.50. The 111.50 level is, you know, the breakout point one right it's the breakout point okay it's also the 50 percent retracement of where this last move really started right but if you take the entire move it's a 38 percent retracement so a 38 percent retracement 50 percent retracement a breakout point that's triple confluence right comes in around the 111 50. Now, if we drop to 111.50, the, the first thing that, you know, you're probably thinking about, and I'm thinking about the same thing is, okay, it's not going to complete its head and shoulder pattern. You're right. It's not going to, it's not going to complete its head and shoulder pattern or its mid head and shoulder pattern. Uh, if we, if we make our way down there, that's true. But one of the things that I think about with the head and shoulder pattern is they very rarely complete anyway. Right, so it gets everybody all excited. Everybody gets bearish in this in this example, and chances of it completing is not very good anyway. Knowing there's a lot of support, this is probably a tradable area. Now, th th that doesn't mean that we're going to go to here and then all of a sudden we're going out to new highs. But this should be a tradable bounce area, right? At 111.50. Now, 111.50 may take us back to 112, maybe 111.80. Maybe back to 113, and, you know, and I think a lot of that has more to do with, uh, you know, risk aversion, risk appetite. It has more to do with, you know, how's the European Council meeting go on, on Friday? Excuse me, things like that. So, um, you know, I do think that, that we are going to be, we're going to have a tradable area from the 111.50 area, okay? Uh, let's talk about the Aussie. So the Aussie has been very, very strong, but... What the Aussie has done is we have failed at the 618 retracement thus far. Okay, we've made a lower high. And um, 
that's something that you know we have to be aware of now we've we've rallied substantially from these lows i mean we're at 9833 uh, we've rallied 60 pips from the lows why it's because it's the aussie why not you know i have no idea but it's strong annoyingly yes but very strong okay so the aussie's back at uh, at the 69 cent level should it, realistically it should fail here i don't know if you 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 know for those of you that want to step in front of it um you know it's probably probably a decent fail area uh you know maybe at the 50 percent retracement at 69.05 might be a better place but you know i'd be looking for to see how it reacts once it gets up you know around above 69 cents just to see what's what's you know do, what it's going to do there um and then uh let's talk about the u.s dollar mexican peso really quick so the u.s whoops the u.s dollar mexican peso you know we've had a really pretty big rally off of the lows but the one thing about the peso you'll notice here it's not giving up its gains and and i see that stocks are recovering okay so what should eventually happen is the U.S. dollar and Mexican peso should come back under pressure, but it's holding up relatively well. And so we do have to observe that and, and, and keep that in mind as we're, you know, navigating through the markets, right? Just understand that the U.S. dollar and Mexican peso is holding up relatively well, which tends to be a little bit of a risk on risk off barometer. And then you got, you know, currencies like the, the, the South African Rand, which is actually positive on the day, the Turkish Lira, the US dollar TRY, which is actually positive on the day. And so um, the US dollar Mexican peso, you know, maybe basically break even on the day, but it's holding up relatively well based on how strong the stock market is at this point. So um, now if stocks turn lower, I think the, you know, the thing that's gonna happen here is you're gonna see the US dollar Mexican peso, you know, try to make a run for this downtrend line, but, Asking for the equity markets to go down at this point, it's extremely, well, it seems like it's extremely unlikely. And it's very frustrating because, you know, the equity markets just don't want to pull back. Even as the numbers, uh, the COVID numbers continue to look horrible, you know, equity markets still, you know, are maintaining their bid. All right. Um, so anyway, uh, if I still sound frustrated from earlier today, I am. I'm, it's just, it, you know, one of the things that I, I've been complaining about in the, in the chat room, and this is the one thing that you guys, um, you know, have heard from me if, if you're in the chat rooms with me. It, you know, the, one, the one-way markets are very, very hard to trade because they don't give you good entries from a risk-reward standpoint. And, um, you know, they're just not giving you, they're, they're not giving you, ways to get in the market. So it's very frustrating when you see just a one-way market. And then you get this quick blip lower, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, the, the quick blip lower in equities just results in a real big buy the dip and the market just takes off again. So anyway, uh, I, I am, you know, I'm not paying attention to the yen pairs as of right now. I'm, I'm really just paying more, more attention to what's happening with the S and P and what's happening with the Aussie and, and the, in the Euro uh, as well. And you can see the Euro is getting a little bit of a bid and, and the Aussie is as well. The Kiwi, uh, you know, holding up and not, not breaking down either. So, um, so anyway, uh, if, if you guys are listening to this after the fact, that means that you're probably not a Forex Analytics subscriber and you're not in the chat rooms with me. So uh, if you're not, make sure you try us out. It's only $1 for 10 days. And for those of you that are actually listening in right now, thank you so much for your support. I'll see you guys in the chat room and hopefully we get uh, some, uh, some better price action here in the days ahead. All right, thanks guys. Have a great one and uh, appreciate all of you. Thanks.